The movie starts in the 1900s, a period when people with extraordinary powers became important in the job market. The authorities asked those with special abilities to sign up and help build Lincoln City. But as machines took over more jobs, the need for superhuman workers decreased. This caused fewer chances for them, leading some to resort to crime. A group called the Trust started using these superhumans to make a dangerous substance named Psyche. This caused many problems and triggered public calls for fresh rules to handle super abilities. In reaction, law enforcement began using drones and robots, called Guardians, to watch over and catch superpowered individuals breaking the law. The story begins with Mary asleep on a sofa. Her son, Connor, wakes her up, noticing she fell asleep in her work attire. While they make breakfast, Connor spots strange marks on his mother's hands. Mary tries to hide her discomfort but admits her hands hurt when she washes them. Connor finds worrying past due bills, which deeply concern him. Despite her declining health, Mary brushes off his concerns, insisting she's okay. It later comes out that she has a brain tumor affecting her superpowers, causing unpredictable ice-related abilities. The scene changes to Connor in a grim waiting room. He fills out some forms and hesitates at a question about superpowers. His answer stays undisclosed as he's quickly called by a woman. Later, in his car, Connor hears a news report discussing global unrest, briefly mentioning the potential threat of people with powers. Arriving at work an hour late, Connor's boss only allows him a half day. Connor expresses his discontent, but his boss remains steadfast. Feeling let down, Connor walks away and talks about a job interview with a coworker. His colleague responds with a sarcastic comment. While chatting, they hear a drone outside scanning the area. Shortly after, the police tell the powered workers at the construction site to leave and get a permit to keep working. During their inquiry, the authorities find out that one worker has a pending arrest warrant. When the police try to arrest him, he fights back by shooting fire from his hands and attempts to escape. However, guardians, sent from a drone, descend and shoot him until he's dead. Elsewhere in Lincoln City, the police raid a man's apartment. A guardian robot breaks through the door, but the suspect, identified as a Class 4 brawn, disables the robot by throwing a disc at its neck. The suspect attempts to escape through a window, but Officer Park intervenes and threatens to shoot. During the raid, they discover a room full of superpowered individuals being exploited for their spinal fluid. They also find bags of psych, linking the scene to a criminal leader named Marcus Sutcliffe. Meanwhile, Connor visits his mother at the grocery store. There, her boss scolds her for accidentally freezing a sauce and dropping it. Mary Reed, who can control ice, is struggling with her powers because of a brain tumor. Connor gets furious at how Dave, his mother's boss, talks to her and almost uses his own powers. Dave tells them to leave the store. On their way home, Connor pushes his mother to start chemotherapy, but Mary explains they can't afford it. The next day, while Connor waits for a job on a street corner, he sees a truck from Lincoln Power. His friend Travis warns him against getting involved, saying they're linked to Sutcliffe's gang. The truck approaches, and the driver asks for someone with electrical powers, class 2 or higher. Connor hesitates but eventually agrees for $200 up front. Inside the truck, a silent man named Freddy, a brawn, signals to Connor to put on a safety vest. Garrett, driving the van, takes Connor to a chemical plant to disable an electric fence. Connor tries to cut the wires but gets shocked, causing him to overload them instead. Maddie, a pyro, melts the lock, allowing them inside. While they load chemical barrels, a guard shows up and tries to call for backup. Garrett, who has telekinetic abilities, takes the guard's radio, and the guard surrenders, saying he didn't see anything. As they leave, the police get a report about a break-in at Jones Chemical, looking out for a red cargo van. Connor asks for payment and to be let go, but Garrett insists they're not done yet. Under a bridge, Garrett tells his team to remove the van's logo and red cover. A drone spots them, but the police, noticing the color difference, search elsewhere. Garrett then drives the van to a garage and asks Rhino to guide them to Sutcliffe, who can read minds. Rhino leads them through a secret entrance to Sutcliffe's nightclub. Inside, Wesley Combo, a representative of the trust, confronts Sutcliffe about not meeting financial commitments. Sutcliffe tries to explain his failure to pay, but Cumbo insists he read Copperhead's thoughts. Sutcliffe claims Copperhead plans to harm him. Cumbo gives him one week to settle his debt with the trust. After Cumbo leaves, Garrett introduces Connor to Sutcliffe. Sutcliffe, probing Connor's mind, realizes his potential usefulness and tells Nia to familiarize Connor with the place. Nia offers Connor a drink, 
but he declines, saying he's just visiting. Sutcliffe tells Garrett he can't pay for the chemicals right now, focusing on what he owes Combo. Asking about Connor's powers, Sutcliffe shows interest in hiring him. Garrett mentions that Connor needs training, but Sutcliffe insists on quick preparation for a profitable venture. Later, Garrett drops Connor off, giving him an extra $300 as a bonus and advises him not to waste his abilities. At home, Mary tells Connor she went back to work at the grocery store. Connor doesn't approve of her boss, but Mary stresses their financial need. At the club, Nia asks Sutcliffe for psych. He shows her a vial but requests a favor in return. Officers Park and Davis are looking into the chemical theft. Park figures out that an electric caused the fence to malfunction, and a pyro broke the lock. The next day, Travis warns Connor about getting involved with Sutcliffe's group. Even though the foreman is searching for two electrics, Connor chooses to go with Garrett instead. Garrett asks Connor why, and he explains it's to pay for his mother's medical treatment. Garrett challenges Connor to set off a car alarm as a test. Connor succeeds and finds out he could earn $25,000 for the upcoming heist. Garrett learns that Connor's father, also an electric, was killed in a heist, realizing Connor was raised by his mother, who doesn't have powers. Garrett starts training Connor, beginning with a simple task of lighting a bulb, which Connor accidentally breaks on his first try. Getting ready for a big heist, Connor takes on different tasks for Garrett, such as collecting money from drug dealers. Over time, Connor gets better at lighting a bulb steadily without breaking it. Garrett tests Connor's skills by putting him against another electric who doesn't want to pay. Despite getting shocked, Connor overpowers him with a stronger shock. Garrett pushes Connor to be more aggressive. One night, Connor confronts Dave at the grocery store, intimidating him. Later, he tells his mother he's landed a stable job. Meanwhile, Park and Davis, watching his home, gather details about his financial difficulties in paying for his mother's medical bills and put him on their watch list. The next day, Connor and Garrett scout a bank for their robbery scheme. Connor checks out the security cameras and the vault's location. Garrett explains they need to leave within five minutes of the alarm going off. At the grocery store, Mary senses something is wrong with Dave. During the robbery, Connor goes to the vault to disable its power. When the alarm goes off, they pressure an employee to manually open the vault. While Garrett intimidates her, Connor tries to calm the situation. When they get into the vault, they realize most of the money is gone, so they quickly grab what's left. But there are drones with guardians waiting outside. Connor disables the drones, and they go back to Sutcliffe, reporting they only got $50,000. While Garrett and Sutcliffe argue about paying back the trust, Copperhead shoots Sutcliffe. Rhino shields him, but Copperhead then aims at Nia. Connor knocks the gun away, causing Copperhead to attack him with a knife. Rhino steps in, shooting and fatally injuring her. Afterward, Connor finds out Nia is using Psyche. He asks why Kumbo's hitman targeted her, and she says it's not the first threat she's received. Nia notices Connor's arm injury and heals it, explaining the attack was because of her powers and her debt to Sutcliffe. At home, Mary questions Connor about the money in his drawer. He initially says it's from extra work hours, but when Mary calls his supposed workplace, they have no record of him. Connor admits to getting involved in criminal activities for money. Suddenly, Mary loses control of her powers and faints. At the hospital, the doctor says her tumor needs immediate surgery, a cost Connor can't afford. Outside the hospital, Park and Davis are waiting for Connor. They ask him to come to the police station for questioning about the chemical plant and bank robberies, and they warn him about working for Sutcliffe. Park offers help in exchange for information, while Davis provokes Connor by insulting his father making him angry. Connor denies any part in the crimes, and Park, though skeptical, lets him go. Garrett picks up Connor, who assures him he didn't talk to the police. Connor suggests a new plan for Sutcliffe. At their hideout, Sutcliffe reads Connor's thoughts, confirming he didn't speak to the police. After hearing Connor's plan, Garrett suggests hijacking a police convoy transporting $10 million in psych to a disposal facility. Connor bargains with Sutcliffe to exchange Nia for the psych, hoping to use her healing ability on his mother. Upset by the deal, Nia leaves in a huff. Meanwhile, Garrett negotiates his own terms, aiming to become a partner with Sutcliffe. While planning the operation, Connor insists on not hurting any police officers. He promises Nia her freedom once she heals his mother, but Nia accuses him of only valuing her for her healing powers. On the day of the heist, they set up roadblocks and wait for the armored van. Drones keep an eye on things but have to pull back when they enter a restricted airspace. The van changes its path, 
but Garrett blocks it with a garbage truck. Connor attacks the van, disabling the guardians inside. Garrett uses telekinesis to further control them, while the team disables the rest of the robots. Maddie creates an opening for Freddy to release tear gas. The police show up, but a drone enters the restricted airspace. Maddie gives the psych to Rhino, who shoots her and runs away. Garrett, Freddy, and Connor escape amid the chaos, but Freddy gets hurt. Rhino delivers the psych to Sutcliffe, who ignores Nia's questions and suggests he won't let her go because of her father's debts. Connor, finding out about Freddy's death, blames Garrett for Sutcliffe's betrayal. Back at the police station, Davis claims Connor was involved in the theft, but Park sees him as just a pawn in a bigger plan. Connor goes to see his mother at the hospital, promising to get her treatment. However, Mary asks him to quit his criminal activities and come to terms with her condition. Meanwhile, Park spends time with his daughter, Lena, who is upset because other kids are scared of her powers. While they walk, Lena shares her fear of being abandoned by her parents because of her abilities. Travis passes on a message from Connor to Park, leading to a meeting at a diner between them. Connor says he's ready to help catch Sutcliffe before turning himself into the authorities. At the police station, officers prepare for an operation to capture Sutcliffe. Meanwhile, at a bar, there's a violent confrontation, and Sutcliffe manages to escape with Nia and Rhino. Amid the chaos, Garrett shoots Sutcliffe, and Rhino aggressively confronts him. Garrett uses telekinesis to slow Rhino down, and Connor joins in, using his electrical powers. As Rhino grabs Connor, Garrett steps in, stabbing and electrocuting Rhino, resulting in his death. Nia grabs Sutcliffe's gun, and Garrett forces Sutcliffe to surrender. Connor shows up and promises Nia her freedom after she helps heal his mother. Garrett gives Connor Sutcliffe's gun. Nia, showing a wound on her arm from healing Connor before, warns that healing his mother could be fatal for her. Despite Nia's objections, Connor, with a gun pointed at her, insists she come with him to the hospital. However, he rethinks his decision, considering his mother's condition. In a touching moment, Connor says goodbye to Mary as she dies. Connor gives Nia his truck so she can leave the city. Meanwhile, Garrett gives psych to Wesley and takes charge of the drug operations. Connor visits his mother's grave before leaving. Nia has an emotional moment with her father. In the midst of all this, the vote on the powers ban is happening, and Park, feeling conflicted, accepts an award for the successful raid against Marcus. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you want to watch more videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you again soon. Take care.